Brazil's presidential election will be settled in a second round of voting on October 30th. That's after no candidate took an absolute majority of votes on Sunday. With nearly all of the ballots counted, the former president, leftist Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, has 48 percent. Incumbent president, the right-wing populist Jair Bolsonaro, received an unexpectedly strong 43 percent. The moderate Simone Tebet is trailing in third place with 4 percent. The tight race means voters now face a tense runoff between the two leading candidates. Rallying for two very different kinds of Brazil. The mood is festive, despite an unexpectedly tight race. Many hope a change in leadership will bring about an end to economic hardship. Why am I celebrating here? Because Brazil is experiencing difficult times. For four years, we have had a government that doesn't love the people, that doesn't care for the people. Supporters of left-wing candidate and former President Lula hope he will make good on a campaign promise to address socioeconomic inequalities as well as stem an alarming increase in deforestation. You know that the economy is not good, that your quality of life isn't good, that the job market isn't good, that the health system isn't good. We want to make our country better again. Lula is remembered by some for the economic prosperity during his presidency. But supporters of Bolsonaro also recall Lula's conviction on corruption charges, a judgment later overturned. There's a second round and we must work. It will be the truth against the lies, God against corruption, freedom of Bolsonaro against the censorship of Lula. Bolsonaro has outperformed polls despite being blamed for the economic decline during his term. Bolsonaro has also faced criticism for mishandling the pandemic, but the level of support for his conservative brand of God, country and family politics is still high. And to put this result in perspective, I'm joined now by Valentina Sader. She leads the work on Brazil at the Atlantic Council's Adrian Ash Latin America Center. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Bolsonaro proved the pollsters wrong, it would seem, by performing so strongly. Why were the predictions so off the mark? Thank you for having me. Um, yes, uh, he did prove the polls wrong. In a way, many of us are looking at the polls and analyzing some of the things that also happened in 2020 here in the United States. Um, the polls were off by how the margin that he was going to um, lose against Lula on the first round. Um, some predicted even that Lula could win on this first round, and that clearly was not the case. Many are saying that the expectation there was in the sense of the votes not the, the polls not capturing the 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 Tactic voting, that's what we call it in Brazil, voto útil, is when people decide to go for a candidate rather than someone that they would actually be more aligned with, so they can actually not have this other candidate win um, instead, the one that basically going for a, a against PT kind of vote, PT is Lula's Workers Party. Having said that, uh, that not necessarily shows, um, gives this extreme difference. Not only that, we also have some of the shame votes. Um, that's what we call it when they don't want to necessarily um, announce that they are voting for one versus the other. So we don't necessarily account for those votes. I think that happens a lot with far right candidates in, in elections everywhere. But let me just come back to Bolsonaro. Could he now win the runoff? I think it's possible. I think that on a second run, um, he has a very a, a stronger chance of winning um, as well. I think that this hasn't happened in Brazil for the longest time, honestly, if ever, um, of a second um, contestant actually turning the election um, in the second round. But I think it's possible. He is 5% away from Lula um, on the polls are suggesting. But then you also have, when you look into Simone Tabich's um, uh, votes, which is about 4%, and then Ciro Gomes, which is about 3%. Um, that's a bit over 7% mm -hmm. of the vote. And then you have others there to include too. So he could, he could. There is a possibility me, there that he could Let win. me ask you this. You're describing what sounds like a real horse race. And if you could briefly, what kind of campaigns do you expect the two candidates to, to conduct now? 
So I think that they will both be, especially Lula will be trying to signal to the center. I think that uh, Alchemin, his vice president, is actually going to be an important figure in this sense. We have a Congress that is highly, um, that was highly uh, elected in terms of Bolsonaro supporters and some right wing um, candidacies there that were successful. So um, especially when we think about a potential Lula administration, this is also going to be a challenge when governing. Um, in terms of the campaign itself, I think we're going to we have to wait to see what Simone Tebic and Ciro Gomes will end up doing. Um, but then also looking and paying close attention to those that abstained um, from voting this round and seeing if that will change um, on the second round, as well as the blank and nulls that were about four uh, percent. Abstention was about 20 percent of votes or non-voters. So this is also something to look into and a specific important data to, to pay attention to. Okay, we look forward to talking to you after that runoff. Valentina Seder from the Atlantic Council. Thanks so much.